Good afternoon. And welcome. We want to thank all of you this evening for coming. We were here. Scandic. We want to thank all these candidates that have agreed to come and show up. Thank you for them. Because we're here to get the program started. We want to thank our president, Francis Gilchrist, and the League of Women Voters, the AKA, the Deltas, and the concerned pastors that has partnership, collaborated together to make this endeavor a great evening. Amen? Amen. And with that, we're going to get the ball moving by asking Pastor Harris if he would be so kind to come up and get us out of the word of prayer. Remind you guys for work prayer, please. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, this occasion, and for our common love in the city of Flint. We pray down that you will allow these candidates to have clarity of thought and precision of tongue. And may the ultimate result be a better Flint in which to live. We give you thanks even now in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next, we have Councilman Bernard Lawler. Uh, for the seventh ward, we have candidate Monica Galloway and candidate Alex Harris. And for the eighth ward, we have Dr. Joyce Ellis McNeil. Uh, Dr. Joyce Ellis McNeil is no stranger to hard work. She is the CEO and president of Bundles of Love Child Development Center. She is author of Understanding, Understanding Purpose Through Dreams, facilitator for entre entrepreneurial workshops, as well as a retiree from General Motors after 15 years of service. Her academic achievements include a master's degree in public administration, a bachelor's degree in business management, and a doctorate in leadership and theology. She is married to Joel McNeil with two children and four grandchildren. We also have candidate Vicki Van Buren. She is a lifetime resident of Flint. After 25 years, she retired from the city of Flint working with neighborhood organizations, community events, and citywide programs under several administrations. Eight of those years included working side by side with Flint police officers in the community policing program. The past nine years, she coordinated and implemented the lower school after school program at the International Academy of Flint. She has been actively involved in numerous community services and programs, and she is a talk show host and producer for Comcast and Love Flint. So those are the candidates. So now I want to go through the format. Uh, one of the other things I want to say before we go through the format rules is that people could turn their cell phones on vibrate so we don't have that interruption, please. Okay, we're going to go through the format rules. We have three phases. The first phase is 60 minutes. And we have five questions that have been prepared, and the candidates have not had an opportunity to uh, see those questions. And we have a two-minute limit for response. That's when our timekeeper will hold up the 30 seconds, indicating we have 30 seconds left. After that, it's 15. And then they'll hold up the stop sign. And we hope you will be respectful of the time and stop. Otherwise, I'll tell you. Then we have our second phase is 30 minutes. And we're going to take questions from the audience. And some, OK. We have uh, index cards if people want to write out questions and send them forward. We have those out in the audience with pencils as well. So if you hold up your hand, we'll uh, get those to you. The last phase is 12 minutes. And each candidate will have two minutes for their closing statement. So with that, good luck to all the candidates and we are ready to get started. And we're gonna start this evening by talking about the charter. I know all of you have heard the charter talk, what it says, what it doesn't say, and what it should say. So here's the question. Are you in favor of adopting a charter commission? If so, what changes uh, to the charter, would you like to see the commission propose? And what we did was we had them draw numbers, so we will be starting with candidate Van Buren. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, with the charter question, is the charter has been here for a number of years and has helped to guide what we do for the city or in the city. But there's been some things that have been going on, especially after we are under the emergency manager for offices that can close the head we hope that they will be available to us at the Ombudsman office uh, and the civil service commission bill. So I don't believe we have a problem of charter like we should have. And we should be taking a first look at it. We need to have something, a framework that we can work from and continue to have a solid process, a solid government. Because where do we go? We've been so fragmented, we have no direction. So I would like to look further into this, to gather the information, and really see how bad do we need to start making these changes? How, how do we need to be more updated? How can we be strong that we need to have a good government process available to us in the same plan? And could you all speak directly into the mic? You want the two of, two of you to share that, each one of you to share that. But when you talk, if you could talk closer into the mic so we can hear you the next time around. OK. We're going to come. All right. Well, 
the Charter Commission, I, I don't really have a problem. The problem I would have is that we didn't understand the background or the individuals that would be on the Commission Board. In dealing with the Charter, it's not much in there that I really think that needs to be changed. The Charter is good. It's the Bible to the City Councilors. Um, one thing in it that I don't agree with, and I would like for it to be changed, is that City Council has the opportunity to have an opinion on who the City Attorney may be. That's one thing that I probably would like to be changed in it. Um, but overall, the Charter is okay in my mind. From what I've read, I have no problem with the Charter. As long as we abide by it, uh, enforcing the Charter, there's no problem with it. The problem would be is enforcing. That's the only problem. But what it is, it's okay to me. I haven't read anything in it that I don't agree with. I just think that City Council should have the opportunity to make a decision on who the city attorney may be. That's it. Thank you. Thank you to the organizers of this uh, debate and uh, to you, Madam Facilitator, and to everyone that is here today. Um, I think this is great that we're having this opportunity to have this discussion and this debate. Uh, with the charter, charter revisions, uh, I would be uh, supportive of charter revisions, uh, revisions of the charter because we're a smaller city now. Uh, there's there's uh, things in the charter that was written years ago uh, for the size the city was years ago, but now we're a smaller city. Uh, we don't operate the same, we don't have the same revenue. Uh, for instance, I would like to see the charter commission uh, to look at uh, reducing the number of uh, mayor appointees and department heads, I think that uh, will be uh, to the best interest in the financial uh, stability of the city. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, whether there should be a strong mayor or if there should be a city manager, if there should be reduction in wards. I think that's, uh, in, those are important discussions to have. Uh, I think one or the other uh, would be beneficial to the city and uh, more cost effective in, in how the uh, city is being operated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have read through the, the city charter. Um, because I haven't really had to enforce anything in the charter, I can't um, speak on whether it needs to be revised or whether there's a board. So if you would just afford me the opportunity to maybe serve, then I could get more input, if that's okay. Thank you. 